Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 19th of July, 2011. Today we've been wowed by the first pictures of the asteroid Vesta, taken by the Dawn spacecraft. Vesta is the second largest uh, asteroid in the asteroid belt. For today's trivia question, what is the largest? The answer will be given at the end. When we look at the GOES X-ray plot, we see that the Sun managed to produce a C flare. Plus it is continuing to produce a bunch of small B flares. And I think this is the pattern that will continue for quite some time. Looking at the sunspot regions, we see why the Sun has been so quiet. We're losing region 1250 and 1257, which has been quite active. A new region has sprung up in the northwest, region 1258, and it seems to be growing rapidly. But then in a couple of days time, that one's going to disappear over the limb as well. Region 1251 is a large single spot and very stable. Region 1256 is hanging in there but not doing very much. Region 1254 has grown a little bit and was the source of the sea flare that we saw. Regions 1252 and 1255 to all intents and purposes have disappeared. And the region coming over the northeast limb was labelled 1259 yesterday. There is a second region coming over on the northeast limb but I don't see any spots with it as yet, so we might have to wait a day or two to see whether that region has, is developing or not. The sunspot and magnetic field movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory show us the rapid development of that region 1258 in the northwest, and also the appearance of the new region over the northeast limb, region 1259. The transition region movie continues to show some nice dynamic events, and I've blown one of them up here, the one in the northwest, so you can see more detail of what's going on. The event starts with a fairly dynamic prominence, hanging high in the corona. The material then seems to migrate northwards and rise. If you look at the coronagraph data, you can see there's a very weak coronal mass ejection associated with this. But because it's so far to the west, uh, and so small, I believe that it will not affect the Earth. In the low temperature coronal movie you can see a region coming over the northeast limb and then followed by a smaller second one. Neither are very impressive. In the high temperature coronal movie you can see the large coronal hole that's now beginning to affect us. Its extent would indicate that we're going to have at least two, maybe even three days of high speed coronal wind streams hitting the earth. So we might expect some minor auroral activity at high latitudes. Speaking of coronal mass ejection, let's take a look at the SOHO data for what it's worth. We're still having software problems apparently. In this one short sequence you can see that uh, there is a faint CME off the west limb, which as I say was probably associated with that uh, uh, filament eruption that I just showed you. H shows us the state of the solar wind. You can see that the temperature at the bottom here has risen slightly. The speed, shown in yellow, has increased significantly, as has the density over the last 12 hours. So this is the beginning of that high-speed solar wind stream that I've been warning you of for several days. Interestingly, the high-energy electron flux has been dropping steadily over the last two days. And as we've had no major flares, there's no real change in the proton flux. The auroral zone is looking a lot more agitated than it did yesterday. However, the KP index has only been varying between 1 and 2, which is very much on the low side. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at about the B3 level. The sunspot number has increased to 127. The radio sun intensity has dropped to 102 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has increased to 590 kilometers per second with a density of about 5 protons per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions remain quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a good chance of getting C flares but the chance of M flares is poor and the chance of getting X flares are very remote. The sunspot number will remain high, although I think it will drop a little bit soon. The chance of getting coronal mass ejections is good. The solar wind speed will remain high. But the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is remote. We're not expecting any new regions back over the East Limb for at least a couple of days. So in order to get increased activity, we'd have to rely on the growth of existing regions or the emergence of new regions. The answer to our trivia question is Ceres is the largest of the asteroids. Unfortunately, NASA in its usually overblown PR mode is claiming that this is the first um, encounter with an asteroid and they seem to have forgotten their own mission near from a few years ago which encountered the asteroid Eros and actually landed on it. 
I wish they wouldn't do things like that. It seems to undermine their credibility. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.